Hi, this is part two on the lesson of how to load objects from the Captivate library into your widget. In part one, we saw how to do this for the widget properties dialog. In this lesson, we'll see how to do it for other widget modes. Now, in order to do that, first of all, we need to make some alterations to the widget properties dialog mode because this is where the user is going to be configuring settings and letting us know which items it wants to load into the other modes. Okay, so to start off with, uh, we're going to need to set up some widget properties because that's the only way we can pass information from the widget properties dialog into the other widget modes. So to do that, I'm going to use a new template method that has been added in widget factory six, which is very useful for setting up default uh, values on widget properties. So above my initiate function, I've uh, got a commented out write default properties function. And so you can see that's uh, overriding a template method. This function is called by widget factory before the initiate function. And it does this if it detects that you haven't already set up some default properties onto your widget properties. So I've got three widget properties that we're going to be using for the rest of this lesson, one called sound. This is going to hold the library ID for any sounds that we're going to be loading. Of course, we've got another one called image also set to zero. That's going to hold the image ID for uh, any images we want to load into other widget modes. And then a third property called is image embedded, which is going to let us know whether when we're loading an image, we need to use the external loader from the library or the embedded loader. So aside from that code that I've just added there, the only change I've made since the last lesson is adding a add display object function, which is takes any um, display objects like uh, an animation or a image, and it adds that to the slide. I've just done that. So I'm not duplicating that code anywhere. So let's start working with these widget properties. The first place to do that is inside the on external loaded function. Right after we've played a sound, I'm going to go properties dot sound equals ID. So where is this ID value coming from? Well, if we look up here in the on external loaded function definition, it's one of the parameters to this function. When the library is loading the object we've requested it to do, for example, a sound is going to pass in the sound through this object parameter and then the ID of the object we've just loaded into the ID parameter. So that allows us to save the ID in of the current object into this properties.sound. So let's go down and do that for the image. Okay, so after we've added the image to the stage, we're going to set properties.image equal to ID and then properties.isImage embedded to false because this was loaded in the on external loaded function. And I've misspelled properties there, I believe. Yes, there we go. So I'll just copy those two lines of code there and move down to the on internal loaded function and I'll paste those in. And I'll just change is embedded, is image embedded to true because this is the internal loader or the embedded loader. Okay, now there's one other thing we need to do in order to get this to work for our other widget modes and that is inform Captivate which library objects we're going to need um, at runtime. Captivate doesn't embed the entire library into the SWF at runtime because this can take up excess space. It will only load the items that are absolutely necessary. This is the widget's opportunity to tell Captivate which ob uh, items from the library are absolutely necessary. So the best place to define this is inside the save properties function. Okay, save properties is called uh, in when the widget properties dialog mode has been interacted with the user and then they click OK. This at this point, no more properties can be altered by the user and the window is in a, about to be closed down. So at this point, we know absolutely which objects need to be, uh, t uh, we need to inform Captivate uh, are ready to load. I'm sorry, that wasn't a terribly fantastic description, but hopefully the code will get the idea across. Now, there are two lists, 
that we need to send to Captivate of resources we want to load from the library. The first one is the external resources list, and the other one is the embedded resources list. As you can probably guess, the embedded resources list is any images that need to be uh, loaded with the embedded image loader, and the other one, the external resources list, are for sounds or animations or anything else that is loaded with the external loader. So the first thing we're going to do is go library.clear embedded resource list and library.clear uh, external resources list. This is going to make sure we start with a clean state of our lists and that no objects are going to be loaded by mistake um, from the library into the widget, into the published Captivate movie. Okay, so first of all, we're going to add that sound to the external resources list. And we do that by calling the library and saying add to external resources list, list and then we'll pass in that ID, which is saved in the properties.sound widget property. Then we'll go to if properties is image embedded, have something for if it is embedded, if it isn't embedded. Okay, if this image is embedded, then we want to go library dot add to embedded resources list and then pass in that ID, which is saved in the properties dot image widget property. Then I'll copy that line of code, paste it here. So if image is not embedded, then we want to put this into the uh, external resources list. So I'll copy that function there, paste it there. And that's all the code we need to put into the widget properties dialog. So the next step is to load an image to be displayed at stage mode. Stage mode can't play any sounds, but we, so we're just gonna try and load the image or animation at this point. So over here in the widget class, I've already set up a stage mode and a runtime mode for us to work with. So I'm going to jump into stage mode to start with. And inside the initiate function, which I've already overridden, I'm going to check if the uh, image property is greater than zero. No library resource will have an ID of zero. So if the image property equals to zero, as we set its default to right up here in the right default properties function, then that means that we don't have any image to load. However, if it's greater than that, we do have an image to load. The first thing I'm going to do in here is set uh, is ready for snapshot this property, I'm going to set it to false. Now you may not have heard of this before, but what it does is this. What happens with stage mode is that Captivate loads the widget, let it sit, run for a few frames, and then takes an image or a snapshot of it. It will then display that snapshot on the stage mode that we see in Captivate. However, this image that we're loading here may take more than a few frames to load. So in that case, what we want to do is make sure that Captivate can't take this snapshot until we've completely loaded it. And to do that, we'll set is ready for snapshot to false. Captivate before taking the snapshot, will check this parameter. And if it's false, it will wait a few more frames and then wait until is ready for snapshot is equal to true. So with that knowledge behind us, let's move on to the next line. We're going to check if properties.isImageEmbedded is true or false. So if it's true, and here we're going to go library.loadEmbeddedImage, pass in properties.image, and then we'll call a function called onImageLoaded. However, if we need to use the external loader to load this image, we're going to go library dot load external and then pass in the same stuff properties dot image and on image loaded. So actually the code that we need to add this uh, image to the stage is identical whether we use the external loader or the embedded loader. So I've already set up this function down here uh, on image loader, all it does is pretty much what it did inside of the test uh, widget properties dialog mode that we were looking at before. Checks to see whether object is a display object. If so, it adds that object to the stage so that we can see it in the snapshot. And speaking of the snapshot, we then go and set is ready for snapshot to true to inform Captivate that it is safe to take a picture of our widget now. 
Let's see whether what we've done so far works. I'm going to publish this widget and then I'm going to go over to Captivate and update it. Okay, the little red ball up the top there uh, tells us that we can update the widget. So I'm going to right click, go update, click OK to the message that comes out afterwards. Then go to the widget properties dialog mode and I'm going to load my megaphone image, click OK. The, uh, Captivate takes a snapshot, boom, there's our megaphone. Let's see whether it works for our animation. I'll go back in, load from library, gear cursor, OK, click OK, there's our gear. Right, so we've got that working in stage mode. Now let's see whether we can get it to work in runtime. Now this is a little bit more complicated than just making it work in stage. And that is because in the initiate function for runtime, it is possible that Captivate hasn't completely loaded everything yet, such as um, the embedded resources or the external resources. So we need to check whether we are able to load anything from the library before we go about doing that. To do that, we can access the library and check the embedded resources list loaded property. If that is equal to true as it is here, then we can call a function and start loading images uh, uh, from the library. However, if that's false, then we need to add an event listener to the library. We need to listen for a library event, embedded resources list loaded event. Now this uh, library event is a custom widget factory event. It can be found under widgetfactory.events.library event. When this event is dispatched from the library, we know it is then safe to load embedded library objects. And I've set it up so whether uh, the list is already ready or whether we need to wait for it is going to call this saying on embedded list loaded function. Now we also need to do this for the external resources loaded list. And we can do that by checking the external resources list loaded property and then also listen for the external resources list loaded event. So scrolling down now to these two event handlers that I've already created. The first thing I've done in each of them is removed the event listener just because that's clean code. And now we can go about loading our items. So starting off with the embedded resource list, I'm first of all going to put in an if, if statement check if properties.image is greater than zero, if there is any image to load in other words, and I'll check if properties.isImage embedded equals true. If it does equals true, then we want to go library dot uh, load embedded image properties. Oops. Try that again. Properties dot image and we'll call the on image loaded function. Okay. I'm going to copy that line of code down into the external list loaded function there. And I'm just going to change the if statement to if is image embedded equals false. And to do that, I'm just going to put an exclamation mark in front of it. And that will do the trick for me and change load, load embedded image to load external. While here, I'm also going to check if my sound can be loaded. So I'll go properties dot sound it's greater than zero. We don't need to check whether that needs to be embedded or not because you can't, it's always external. And I'm going to go library dot load external and put in properties dot sound and on sound loaded as the function we want to call. Now I've already added those two functions down the bottom here on image loaded does something we're pretty uh, familiar with. It checks whether object is a display object. And if so, it adds it to the stage for us to see. On sound loaded, we'll check to see whether object is uh, sound. And if so, it will play it for us. So let's just test this now. This is all the code that we need in order to get this widget to work. So after it is compiled, I'll go back into Captivate. You can see that it's ready to update. So just give it a second to fully publish here. Okay, here we go. Right click, update. Okay, let's go into the widget properties. Let's try loading the megaphone. Okay, that's loading into the widget properties dialog. It's loading into the stage mode. Press F4 to see whether it loads into the preview of the movie. 
There we go. Yep, there it is. Okay, see whether we can get it to load a animation and a sound. So I'm going to go load from library gear cursor. Wonderful, that's showing up. Then I'll go up and get my image. Sorry, sound. Okay, cut that off. The animation is loading successfully into stage mode. Press F4 and we'll see whether it loads successfully in runtime, both the image. Yep, the animation is there and the sound is playing. Cough, cough. Okay, lovely. Now the only thing I haven't done here is when I open up my widget properties dialog, have the sound or the image automatically load into that, but the code for that is pretty obvious and I think you can work it out for yourself. So this is how we can load images from the Captivate library. There are a lot of possibilities for how we can use this. So uh, I hope you guys have fun and I can't wait to see your widgets that utilize this ability.